Hello and welcome back to the Archeria Pigments 3 tutorial series. Today we're going to be dealing with the sample engine. Uh, just before we start, if I can direct you at the, uh, the Patreon link below, uh, check that out. That's a, a great way to help uh, support me and my channel and help me carry on making this content. Let's uh, have a look at what we've got with the sample engine. So this is the default view you're going to get when you first load a basic um, sample. You've got the Grand Piano C3 loaded, which is that note there. But obviously, because it's a sample player, it will reproduce that sample at a pitch-adjusted um, interval. So if I play if I play a chord, it's playing the same fundamental sample but spread over three notes. This is all basic stuff. If we click in the name itself, we've got a big bunch of uh, factory presets to choose from. Everything from Foley sounds, which is like atmospheric kind of sound effects, TV sound effects, uh, sort of things to uh, live instruments. It's all very basic stuff. Down at the bottom, we have the opportunity to import our own stuff. Let's have a go at that. Very similar to what we dealt with in the wavetable, click the folder button. This is going to import an entire folder of samples. Let's pick uh, the mallets. And now we've got everything from that folder. So if I select one of them and we come out of the sample viewer, then you can see this is the sample that's just been loaded. So if I press a key, let's find out what we've got. And you can see the sample player moving from left to right playing the sample as it goes. You can also see this is a very long sample. There's really no limit to the size of the sample that you can import. It's limited by your computer as opposed to the wavetable, which is limited to 524, whatever it is, thousand samples. This thing has no limit. Now there's various means by which we can select the area, the zone of the sample that we're going to play. Uh, we'll deal with that shortly. Carry on having a look at the, the browser uh, functionality first. Got forward and arrow backwards so that we can cycle through the various samples in our library. And we've got these three buttons across the top, main, edit, and map. Curiously enough, we're actually not going to deal with main today because that primarily concerns itself with the granular processor and we'll deal with that in part two. That's quite a weighty subject. We're gonna start for today on the edit screen and this is actually your basic kind of core uh, set of features that we've got for manipulating the sample. Now, in order to demonstrate this particular sample that I've selected, um, I'm going to have to do some editing on it first because if I start, you can see me mashing C2 there and you're not hearing anything. It's because the first couple of seconds of sample are actually silent. So I want to choose a new start point. I want to pick a start point here. And there are a couple of ways that I can do it. You might be tempted to pick up this start knob and move this play marker. You see that white bar is the play marker. Now where, wherever I press a note, it's going to start playback from there. And you might think, jobs are good. And that's fine and it does work. But a better way to do it is to actually trim the start and end points of the sample to what you actually want to hear. And we do that with these little arrows at the top left and top right of the main viewer. If I pick that up, and move this bar instead. I've now trimmed that sample. If I want to do a little bit more fine control um, tuning, see the hand symbol in the ruler and then drag down with my mouse, I can zoom in. If I pick this ruler up, I can drag to the left and right as well. So now I can pick this control up and get it really nice and fine and then click and drag up. And now I'm actually starting the sample from where I want. I'll pull the end in a little bit because we don't need all of that vast swath of uh, silence at the end. But we're obviously very rarely going to get there because it's such a long sample. If you're wondering why we've got those two different controls, this is primarily used in the granular synth, which we'll deal with next time. Now, the sample that you've loaded might be pitched um, to any kind of sound. So if I press a key, you can see on the tuner, it's actually playing a C5. And that's fine. I mean, it's, 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 it's going on to then play like a full tune, but the, the root note is actually C. If it wasn't, we can adjust that uh, with the root note setting here. Now let's have a look at the various playback modes. If I engage the loop 
button by clicking it turns blue we've now got a secondary loop it looks the same as the um, start and end points that we already had but this is different if I click and drag on the bottom arrows this is now our loop zone so I can move the left and right arrows to my heart's content play a note and now when it gets to the end of that zone it'll loop round bear in mind if I hold that key down and change the zone it doesn't actually reset itself until you press a new key so don't do editing while you've got keys pressed down uh, it, it's not recognized by the sampler in order to show you what release means I'm gonna to have to give myself some um, some time after I let the key go so I'm just gonna to have to hop into the envelope really quickly and give myself some release give a bit more okay that's plenty and I'll move this a bit closer so we don't have to wait quite so long so what's going to happen now is that this sample is going to loop around again and again and again when I let the key go it's going to carry on looping so with release engaged the the sample player carries on with its regular behavior until the notes completely finished if I disengage release and do exactly the same thing now it doesn't care about the sample player once I let the key go so now I'm going to let the key go and it'll just carry on playback wherever it happens to be in playing its sample back it will carry on from there so it lets you kind of break out of the loop and terminate naturally we've also got reverse mode which is really pretty straightforward well actually it completely isn't very straightforward is it it's completely backwards our loop mode is forwards or back and forth again that's really pretty self-explanatory it's going to bounce at the end and then come back on itself loop fade is like a crossover if I uh, just zoom in to the loop area and increase our loop fade you can see it's giving me a crossover so I when when it loops around now it mixes between where it's approaching at the end of the sample at the end of the loop and the beginning point gain is basically just a, a volume knob if you're dealing with multiple samples this is the best way to balance their various volumes and pan is very straightforward over on the right hand side we've got the opportunity to copy a sample to a different location so if I say copy to sample B we've now got um, a second copy in here and we can have different loop points and different start points but bear in mind that only one sample is ever going to play at to, at a time we'll uh, we'll get on to the layering shortly we can also delete the change we've just made by deleting slot b it'll ask us to confirm it and then over on slot a if we click the clear it just basically throws all, all our edits away over on the mapping page this is where we control our sample layering and when i say layering it's relatively straightforward in pigments it's not the like multi-sampled, multi-layered mega configuration you might get in something like Halion. Uh, in single mode, you literally pick your sample and that's it. It's going to play this glockenspiel sample and that's all it's going to do. If I load a different sample into slot B, I really shouldn't have pressed that clear button. <laughs> it broke all of my um, start point settings. I'll just fix that again. And bring that back in so you do have independent start points for every sample it's just that when I pressed reset I screwed it up there's my marimba and there's my glockenspiel okay back to where we were in key map mode uh, pigments will assign each of the samples to octave ranges and it applies one octave per sample until it gets to the last filled slot and then uses the rest of the range so you can see it's uh, playing the glockenspiel for only for a single octave and then the uh, the marimba takes over marimba is a really hard word to say <laughs> uh, and you can change the range over which the whole view um, takes but it's always this same six octave range in key and velocity map you've got up to uh, three samples over three different ranges 
So if I quickly load something else into sample C, you can see now that all three slots are filled. But it's a bit weird, this mode. It depends on how many samples you've got loaded as to what it actually does. If I fill all six slots, and I'm going to go C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So I've just loaded all of those in, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. And now you can see this is telling you which of the slots is assigned to the different velocity layers. So we've got a lower zone, which is samples A, B, and C, and then an upper zone, D, E, and F, and they cross over at this velocity range, velocity 64. So if I press C3 softly, I'm getting sample C. If I press that note harder, I'm getting sample F. Down on uh, C2, that's slot B you're hearing, and then if I hit it harder, that's slot E you're hearing. So it really depends on how many slots you've got filled as to what this table does. This is a read-only view. I can't click it and drag it. I can't do anything. You have to carefully pick which samples get put into which slots. And then depending on how many you've got filled, it'll basically apportion them out for you. In sample pick mode, whatever the knob is currently pointing at, that's the sample you're going to hear. And this is quite cool when you assign an LFO to it. So if we assign LFO1 to this, now as things stand, it won't work. Every note that I'm pressing is re-triggering the LFO and it's basically pointing at exactly whatever the knob is. I need to set my reset source to free running and now the LFO is free to do whatever it wants. And chaos ensues. So it's now choosing whatever sample it happens to be pointing at when I press that key. In round robin, it literally picks the next sample. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the, there's the glockenspiel. And then you'll get five marimbas. One, two, three, four, five, glockenspiel. And surely, I don't need to tell you what random does. Literally, just picks a different sample every time. Okay, that's easy mode. Next time, we'll press this hidden button, turn the granular synthesizer on, and see what that's all about. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.